So hello everyone and thank you all for being here today. We wanna to start by thanking the Department of the Air Force School Liaison Program for making today's webinar possible. Also, we wanna thank you for taking that initial poll that you may be seeing there on your screen. Um, great, we do see that we have professionals joining us today and we thank you for being here. We always welcome uh, our professionals that work with our military connected children to our parent trainings. Uh, we know you'll find the information and tips that we present um, helpful, useful, but note that our MSEC parent support webinars have been designed with parents as the target audience. So sometimes, the, you know, the wording is definitely that way. So before we introduce ourselves, we want to share a little bit more about MSEC and its mission. Thanks, Michelle. No Okay, thank you, Marie. The Military Child Education Coalition is a nonprofit organization that was established more than 20 years ago. And our mission is to support all military connected children by educating, advocating, and collaborating to resolve educational challenges associated with the military lifestyle. In 2005, MSEC formalized support and programming for military connected parents so that they may be empowered, informed, and proactive in supporting their children's educational journey. We strive to deliver informative and interactive webinars that address academic, social, and emotional issues associated with the military family lifestyle. And our vision is that every military connected child is college, work, and life ready. So good morning, everyone. My name is Marie McGarry, and I am joining you from Northern Virginia. We're waiting on those cherry blossoms. I think they'll be out in the next week or so. So very very happy to be with all of you today. I am a proud active duty Army spouse of almost 22 years and a mom to two military connected teenagers. I have a high school junior and a high school senior. I have been with MSEC since 2017. I started in parent support programs out in El Paso, Texas, and have worked with the webinar team and also doing professional development and student trainings. And my co-presenter today is my friend and colleague, Michelle Brashear. Michelle? Thank you, Marie. My name is Michelle Brashear. I'm joining you today from sunny Madison, Alabama. My husband and I um, together, we did, he did just under 30 years of active duty service. And we moved 14 times, 14 plus times during that. So we moved, you know, quite a few times. We have two incredible military connected children who obviously have had to change schools multiple times. Our family has experienced, you know, many of those changes that the military lifestyle brings us all. But I will say that music has been a part of their lives from early on and continue through uh, middle school and high school and college where they were in band. So just want to let you know, because we've been there just like Marie, I really enjoy sharing these workshops with you all. I've been uh, working with MSIC and supporting military families again since 2017 as well. So let's get a couple of administrative announcements out of the way. At the end of the webinar, we're going to invite and encourage you to take our survey about today's presentation. We really would appreciate it if you took the few minutes it takes to uh, give us your feedback. This is actually the key method that we use to tell our funders what we're doing, and it lets us know where we maybe need to adjust so we continue offering the very best training opportunities to you, our military-connected parents that we serve. You'll see a chat box on your screen where you can ask questions during our webinar. Please feel free to utilize this feature in Zoom. Of course, we also encourage you to share resources, but please do note that MSEC does not allow advertising for paid services in our webinars. So you also see a PDF file in your chat box. Um, this is resource. This contains the resources and information relating to today's webinar. So please know that if you're joining us on your phone, you will not be able to download that resource. But if you provide us your email, or you can private message us, we can send those to you later today. So please know that you can always view the recording later if you want to view this material, or maybe you have experienced some technical difficulties during the presentation. All right, let's get started. Music is all around us, right? The clapping of our hands, the cooing of the sounds of a baby, the wind moving through the trees, the sound and the of the rain on a roof, or a favorite song maybe passed down by the, through the family. 
the wonderful thing about music is that you don't need any special lessons or fancy equipment to enjoy music at every age and every stage of life. So let's review our objectives for today. We want to identify the benefits of music specifically for our military connected children. We wanna address how music training can extend to the classroom. Describe how music can help our children with building their math skills. And we wanna show how you as parents can encourage the love of music. So we have one more poll for you, a nice easy one. What are the ages of the children or maybe the children that you work with? If you are a professional joining us today, just to get an idea of uh, who we're dealing. Oh, we got the full gamut. We have ages zero to 13 plus. So great, we welcome you all. And I think there's something here for all of you. Well, I know that there is. <laughs> so before we get into the, as the music aspect of this specific webinar, we wanna take a moment just to discuss some of the challenges that our military connected children face. And then we'll focus on how music can help ease some of those challenges. So as we all probably are aware of, the military lifestyle includes frequently relocations, many transitions, and separations from the service member. These can be very stressful situations for our kids. The average military child changes schools between six and nine times before they finish high school, which obviously can impact their academic progress. The average child has the power to succeed in school with the support of adults in their lives. This can include their teachers, but most importantly, their parents. And research suggests that parental involvement is vital to a student's academic success and well-being. With all the additional challenges that the military lifestyle can bring, you can understand why parental involvement is especially important for our military families. So let's start by discussing some benefits of music. Research suggests that music education can contribute to the healthy development of our young children. There are a lot of misconceptions that exist about music. Some people believe that only a small number of people actually possess the music ability or that ability is determined either by the parents' level of musical achievement or maybe being born into a musical family. I can tell you that is not true. <laughs> Some believe that disabilities like hearing impairment or physical challenges can interfere with the possibilities for music learning. However, numerous research studies have refuted those assumptions over the past decades. Music helps create a rich environment that actually fosters self-esteem, promote social, emotional, and intellectual development in all children. This can be particularly important for our military-connected children who we talked about are confronted with these frequent changes and challenges. So, so let's look at some of the more concrete benefits that music can bring. So some of the benefits that music can include Strengthening that eye-hand coordination. Music, making music involves more than just fingers playing an instrument or singing. A child learning about music has to use multiple modes of learning all at the same time. So kids use their eyes, their ears, and their small and large muscles. If they play an instrument, they definitely develop that hand-eye coordination, right? Way more than just music. Music can help enhance language development. Children come into the world ready to learn those sounds and words, and music helps with that process. So growing up in an environment rich with music can aid in strengthening language development. Plus, I always say music is a language of its own, right? Just being able to read music. Mental processing. So spatial temporal reasoning is the ability to mentally move objects in space and time and to solve the multiple step problems. So imagine, close your eyes and imagine a 3D, like a cube or a prism in front of your face and then manipulate it and rotate it in your mind. And you kind of understand the object's placement in space. 
Some research suggests that music can enhance that mental processing and spatial temporal reasoning. Music can help children visualize, visualize various elements that should go together like they would when solving a math problem. Learning to play an instrument has been found to improve mathematical learning, boost memory, and even lead to better academic scores. So we have a question for you that you can put in, you can put your answer in the chat box or give us a thumbs up. Do you use music to relax? Do you ever find yourself, you know, you have a go-to maybe song, um, but doing so can be another, yes, thank you, Debbie, another great benefit of music. So the last one would be well-being. So we all know how music can help us feel better or improve our mood by singing along, maybe dancing, or you know, just redirecting our thoughts sometimes. So interventions in healthcare can sometimes actually use music as an additional treatment or music therapy to help patients. So as we discussed earlier, our military connected kids move frequently. They have to say goodbye to their friends, get accustomed to new environments, new social situations, and be that new kid over and over again. And again, they are they deal with their parents being absent, maybe extended TDY or deployed. And again, these can all be very stressful for our kids. Some studies suggest that music can actually enhance the immune system by reducing that stress. Um, it can have a positive effect on emotions and behavior. Again, some people use music to calm down. And you may have noticed that some, your doctor or your dentist office, they use that soothing music in the background. I think ours listens to Yacht Rock Radio, if anyone is familiar with that. <laughs> um, uh, and parents, when your kids are babies, what do you do? You use lullabies, bedtime songs to help soothe your children to sleep. So you know your child best if they seem stressed or worried. You know, it's worth a try to find some of that calming music that might actually help them. And I'm going to give it to Marie. Thanks, Michelle. What is they? What's the saying? Music sa saves their calms the savage beast, right? Uh, we know from that poll that we have people that have children of all ages and music can benefit children at every stage of development. When children are babies at infancy stage, singing lullabies uh, to them can create a bonding experience and babies associate the sound of that music with comfort and safety. And it doesn't matter how great of a singer or not great of a singer you are, it's just that sound of your voice. And those repetitive songs, they're also great for helping to develop those early language skills. Our early childhood and preschool children love to participate and sing along to music at this age. They're learning how to be more independent. They're practicing those fine motor skills and songs that ask them to follow directions like head, shoulders, knees, and toes, or teach a specific skill like teeth brushing or cleaning up are wonderful ways to help them learn how to follow directions and build routines. For our school-aged children, children at this age are developing their sense of self and learning how to interact with others. So songs about feelings and relationships are great for this age group. Uh, go Taylor Swift. That's why singers like Taylor and other uh, singers that appeal to that emotional side and under seem to understand what the kids are going through are really appealing to them. And music is a powerful learning tool and engages both parts of the brain's hemisphere at the same time. So anytime you can create a music connection at a child's level of development, you will likely see benefits in their language development, in social and fine motor skills, and their emotional intelligence as well. So we have a short video that we wanted to share with you that helps to highlight some of the points that we have made. All right, let's talk uh, family first, which gears for a little bit at 644. We can quote the Go-Go's and say, we got the beat. We can also quote Gloria Stefan and the rhythm is gonna get you. What are we talking about with family first? Well, we're talking about music, the importance it can play in your child's development. We spoke to a recreational therapist, a sound healing practitioner on what parents can do to begin the soundtrack to a child's life. And so 
before I even came out of the womb, I was singing and making music and inst you know playing instruments of po pots and pans and all types of different things. That's Beth Patella, a therapist of sound mind when it comes to sound. And she has solid soundtrack advice for your newborn. There is a saying that music is the universal language of mankind, and that goes to our heartbeat. If we're alive, we all have a heartbeat, which means we all have natural rhythm. And it's that rhythm that beats everything else when it comes to childhood development. Children when they come out of the womb have this instinctive um, you know connection with music because they've been in the womb listening to that heartbeat and they've been listening to the rhythm of their mom their mother's breath the movement of her blood meaning everything about them has been formed with that rhythm and that's what Beth says you should be continuing as early as possible put on music at home dance incorporate music into bath time bedtime wake up time in the car just always be mindful about the level and the sound or the volume of music as the child's hearing is developing and if you have a neighborhood music school use it and so sometimes parents are like oh my child's only four months old you know why should i get them involved in music and there's a bit of a misnomer that you can take your four month old to a music class just for the simple enjoyment of music where they get to explore different rhythmic instruments like shakers and triangles and wood blocks they get to move through music and dance and so you're just fostering this love of music in them as well as creating a fantastic bond between parent and child um and you know helping development of the brain your brother used to dance like that? Yeah, yeah. he... Yeah. <laughs> Benefits go deeper than a great bass line. Uh, you are bonding with your child, which at a young age, that attachment is key, best way to foster a connection. Um, I love that video. I love that idea of, of that heartbeat being that first rhythm that your kids will hear. And they mentioned in the video about music and routines. And music can be really helpful in establishing routines. And there is definitely a lot of well-established research on the benefits of routine. And routines are especially important for our military families who live with lots of unpredictability and frequent changes. Routines are important for our children because they give kids a sense of security and reliability. Those schedules help to establish predictability. They know what to expect when things are in their routine at home. Routines also help children experience success in what they're doing, and that helps them to promote self-control and confidence. You know, this is part of my routine. I know when I get up from the table, I bring my plate over, I put it in the dishwasher. You know, I'm doing these things without being asked. I'm being helpful. Uh, so those are all great built character builders for our kids. And then routines also help children to adjust to change as well. There are lots of ways that you can include music in your child's routine. For example, that relaxation before bedtime, maybe we put on some quiet music is part of our bedtime routine. Or when you move to a new location, keeping a routine of singing those favorite songs with your child, dancing, playing those musical instruments. This helps to bring back that feeling of reliability and comfort because children know that despite all of the changes, some of their favorite activities will be there. So even if you're still surrounded by boxes, that bedtime routine of songs and stories and baths and pajamas and wind down, when that stays the same, it brings them that sense of comfort and security, which is really important. Music can also extend into the classroom as well. And there's lots of ways that music benefits uh, the classroom experience. We all know that different states have different curriculums and our military children who move frequently may encounter a variety of curriculums. And these frequent school transitions can impact our academics Experiencing these different curriculums often lead to learning gaps or overlaps, but again, music can help here as well. A recent study of academics examined if music in school age children influenced their academic achievement. <clears throat> Excuse me. It found that students who received music education scored higher on their standardized tests and earned better grades in English. <laughs> So sorry, we're just talking about allergies today. <laughs> Apologies, English language arts and math. Michelle, can you take over this next one? I'm gonna try to. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry. Yeah, we were talking about allergies. It's so bad here in Alabama right now. So we're looking at those um, 
different how music extends in the classroom, we're talking about memory. Everyone who's learned their ABCs, right, knows that it's easier to memorize a list if it's set to music. So research supports the common experience that pairing music with rhythm and pitch and enhances that learning and recall. So even when performing music with sheet music, musicians are constantly using their memory to perform. And this will serve our students well in the classroom and beyond. You can use music to help enhance, uh, bring attention maybe to those boring academic tasks, such as helping your children memorize things by using songs, rhythms, dance, or movement to make that a little bit fun, right? I was telling Marie when we looked at this topic to begin with that our daughter was in high school calculus and was told to put a, a high school calculus topic to music to a tune of their choice, a popular tune. And I was kind of confused by that, but now it all makes sense. And they did a, a great job. I love so, that. Yeah, uh, it was great. And so I'll, let me finish, let me finish this slide out. Or are you good? I think I'm okay now. Okay, I, think, I, think, I think I have recovered, but okay. I appreciate the save. The other thing Michelle and I were talking about was, um, I might be dating myself, but remember those schoolhouse rock videos? Um, you know, how the bill gets to be a bill sitting on Capitol Hill or Conjunction Junction. So all of those are great ways to help children to memorize different things as well. When children are learning to read, students have to have a good working memory and the ability to make speech, speech sounds and quick connections. Sound changes the brain, says Northwestern University professor Nina Krause. And studies indicate that people who play music as a hobby or fun also have better hearing, which I thought was really interesting. Concentration, learning an instrument or singing a song relies not just on your memory, but it also requires that you concentrate. And as children grow older and start playing or singing longer and more advanced pieces, their concentration and their focusing skills are sharpened. And perseverance. Think about how kids learn to play an instrument. Lots of trial and error, lots of progress, pro practice, um, and lots of wrong notes, right? They, they need to be disciplined in setting aside time to practice and improve and focus while they are learning their instrument or practicing to perform. Practice and focus promotes the perseverance required to succeed with their music and aids in their study and time management skills as well. And when the child reaches the goal, they're able to play that song, they've mastered a complicated uh, you know, combination of notes, they'll feel a sense of achievement and pride and perseverance that grit is a really valuable life skill that helps children not only in the classroom but also beyond. Music and math seem to go together. Music can help with the development of math skills in an interactive and fun way. Uh, Michelle talked about the the influence um, of music and her daughter helping her daughter to learn those complicated math math concepts but they can also help by listening to musical beats can help your children to learn basic fractions pattern recognition and problem solving oh thank you tiffany she said um tiffany's made a suggestion about checking out flow vocabulary if you never have my third graders loved it uh so i'll have to check that's a new one for me so i'll look forward to checking out that resource uh thanks so much for sharing and if you have other things that you are aware of throughout this webinar please put those in the chat chat box so we can all benefit from it. So thanks so much, Tiffany. Let's talk about patterns, for example. <clears throat> Simple rhythms, chants and games, patty cake, for example, can help children to understand and manipulate patterns. For instance, you can have child move the children move in a unique way for each section of music that they might be listening to. And doing this helps them to identify through movement the parts or patterns of the whole. Listening for and responding to short patterns in music can also help to expand a child's understanding of patterns in math. Many children's counting rhymes, singer song, singing songs, um, finger plays like the Itsy Bitsy Spider that are part of early childhood music include numbers as well. And they work 
well because the songs encourage children to count to a beat, a tune, uh, follow motions, or all of the above. And rhythm is that ultimate and most compelling counting object. So you can ask your child, for example, to get two instruments from the basket or count the steps in a circle dance that combines those music, music and those early math concepts. Uh, children can gain valuable early learning exposure to some of those basic math skills like counting and one-to-one -one correspondence. And you can help your child learn the skill of matching by singing a tone or making a sound and then asking your child to repeat it. Another idea is to clap a beat and have your child repeat that. Have them clap out the beat of their name. So M-A-R-I-E. And when children match those sounds, they're using that one-to-one -one correspondence skill. Learning to compare is another fundamental math skill. So pointing out loud and soft sounds, fast and slow beats, or high and low pitches. Uh, an idea might be to create a slow beat on a drum or clap it out and then invite your children to walk to that beat, matching their steps to that steady sound. And then do the opposite, make a really fast beat for them to follow. How are they going to move to this beat? How does that look different for them? Or you can pass out rhythm instruments and encourage children to explore a variety of sounds they can make. So you might say to them, can you make a soft sound? Can you make a really loud sound? Can you show me a fast beat? Okay, can you show me a really slow beat? Children learn the basic foundations of geometry through things like circle dances or playing instruments through the movement of their body. Movement combined with word labels such as in and out, up and down, you know, the wheels, people on the bus go up and down, around and around, are helping build spatial awareness and spatial temporal reasoning, which are fundamental to understanding and learning about geometry. So this can help your child's future potential career as perhaps an engineer or a scientist, a musician or an athlete. And our older children who might be learning to play an instrument will also learn about fractions through time signatures and division by practicing different measurements and notes. So for more activity ideas, you can check out Music Mind Games or Kinder Music websites. And those are both in that downloadable resource. And I'm also going to put those uh, in the chat box for you as well, Michelle just did. So thanks so much for that. And I'm going to turn it over to Michelle and she can talk about some other academic areas that can be impacted by music. Okay, thank you. So in addition to math, the study of music also incorporates that science, technology, engineering, and art that steam, right? Music is the sound in the study of sound waves, including frequency and amplitude, and they're all based on scientific principles. So assigning numbers of pitch and tuning, manipulating sound, the development of musical software, you know, incorporating that technology and engineering. So the M in math could easily stand for the M in music. So let's look at the impact of music on our social emotional learning. It can be a powerful tool for promoting that SEL, that social emotional learning. So here are some ways, just listening to music. Music can bring out powerful emotions for our children and ourselves, excuse me. So helping your child to recognize and express their feelings is a very important milestone in their social and emotional development. So you could try something like, Play a piece of music for them. Um, ask that with a, maybe a specific emotional tone, sadness, happiness, and ask your child to think about how does it make them feel? And maybe think about a time when they may have experienced this emotion before. Just don't play that too long, but hopefully, how did that make you feel? Just for an example, right? I'd be surprised if you didn't say it didn't make you feel just a little bit happy. Um, but that's just one example. Your family might have their own happy song or sad song that you can put in that place. So we talked a little bit about this before, but stress reduction and coping skills. So we all know that 
focused breathing can help with a stressful situation. There's a lot of different focused breathing techniques out there, but it's something that even small children can learn and benefit from. Think about pairing music with those deep breathing exercises to encourage our kids to breathe in rhythm with that music, that calm music to calm themselves. So be sure to make them aware of a variety of music. Listen to different types. Maybe you can have a song for every situation. You could put on classical or maybe spa music when you're winding down for a nap or bedtime. Those dance and happy tunes for when you want to get them up and moving and get the wiggles out or pick up the playroom. And children can associate those mus that music with different activities and mood, cha mood changes as the day goes on. These, this is where that could even help with those routines that Marie was talking about. You have these specific songs for specific activities. So a question for you, do you play a lot of music in your home? Uh, and what do you do to foster a love of music with your kids or your students? <laughs> we have professionals joining us. Uh, I know when our kids were little, I would say we played a lot of music when our kids were little. Now they play their own music <laughs> in their earbuds, so we don't get to hear what they're listening to. It's a little bit different, right? But definitely when they're younger, um, we want to introduce them to that music. And we want to be aware that our children are born without a musical bias, right? We, we give them that musical bias of our own. So if they love a song, it's because they love that song. And sometimes it's not the same songs that we like, right? So how, so mus musicals, yes, I love musicals. I, I just saw, I saw Mean Girls, they made into, a, well, it's been on stage, but I just, the movie's out now and it's a musical. I don't recommend that for all ages, but <laughs> it is pretty funny. So you, what are some other ways that you can encourage that love of music? You can, there's all different ways to stream music now, but you could also, I'm just making assumptions of the age with Schoolhouse Rock, but you could dig out some of your old CDs, maybe even your record albums, uh, but then you could listen on YouTube. Um, then there's apps like Pandora, Spotify, many, many different ways to find that music. Uh, often, as Marie mentioned this before, parents are uncomfortable in singing, uh, but your kids don't care, at least when they're young, right? They don't care. <laughs> Long car trips. Oh, yeah. Yeah, our kids do audiobooks when we travel. It's, that is true. Um, but when they're little, they just want you to play with them, to sing with them. And music is a wonderful way to make those everyday activities more fun and a little easier. So make up your own songs or rhymes, maybe while getting dressed or folding clothes, sing while you're doing chores or traveling in the car, just make it fun. Talked about learning how to play an instrument. It can be magical for our kids. It helps build confidence, competence, and it helps them increase their focus. Finding the right teacher or mentor is very important for your kids to flourish. However, there are also some online options. We've listed in the chat, or we will be listing in the chat and on our resource, that some fun music reading and instrument learning apps that are recommended by Common Sense Media. If you use other music apps for children, please let me know. I will stress finding that right teacher is important. Uh, when we moved to our, most, our last location, our son was middle school band and he needed a, a tutor, a teacher. And we ha got one that was specifically recommended for middle school boys because <laughs> that's a they're unique on um, all in their own. And they were right. She was just so good with them. So we want to remember that kids enjoy people watching people dance, move to music. So you could do things like act out the songs that you sing with your hands. We talked about like wheels on the bus or maybe ring around the rosy, those type of things. So dancing with your kids is a great way also to get them a little bit of physical activity any time of the year. Recording music is also a fun way for our kids to experience music from a unique perspective. So you can record your child or maybe the two of you and then sit together and watch and listen to that recording and enjoy, you know, that time that you have together. Apps like GarageBand for, for Apple users are there. 
um, to capture the audio and video, but you could just use your your phone for recording as well. Uh, let's see, I make each of my kids pick up one song. Ah, oh, very good. Headspace and Headspace and Calm Meditation. I've heard of Calm. I've not heard of Headspace. Are great for breathing techniques. Ah, oh, Blue Star Film is offered as your membership. Thank you very much for sharing that, Tiffany. We always like to share those free things available to our, our military families. So if you want to inspire your kids to have that lifelong love of music, something that I don't know is mentioned here, but take them to concerts or festivals or other actual live performances. So maybe the musicals you saw were live, I don't, I don't know. But you could also do online options, but children can see and hear and learn about maybe all the different instruments that are being played. And you can even see if your child can isolate the sound of specific instruments as they, especially if they're playing an instrument, that will be something that they can do. And they can focus and isolate the sound of the instrument maybe that they're playing or maybe that they wanna play. So this is a great way for kids to learn how to become an audience member as well. So when to clap, when to be quiet and just listen, and when to get up and dance and what that's appropriate, right? And I'm gonna send you back to Marie. Thanks, Michelle. So we want to talk about some easy music activity. So our question that we have for you is, have you ever made a homemade instrument? And if so, what did you make? We'd love to share, have you share that in the chat. So uh, Michelle and I brought a, a couple to share today. So I brought the... Um, the toilet roll trumpet. So it's just a toilet paper roll and then a funnel on the end. And um, so kids can have fun with that one. And Michelle, which one did you bring to well, share? Uh, because it's this time of year and you can get these eggs anywhere very inexpensively, or you probably have some. And they little shaker eggs. Very, very easy. If you do it, I would recommend that you hot glue them together. So that nothing, this is just macaroni, but so there's no choking involved, but very simple and very easy. I love that. That is great. So really the focus is fun. So you can make instruments from materials in your home, like a tambourine, a music shaker, maracas, even pots and pans. Um, usually that has a limited shelf life. There's only so long you can listen to that banging, but little kids love to do it. Um, oatmeal box drums are great. Paper towel roll horns, like I showed you. Uh, rice filled plastic bottles, if you want to make a bigger one. Um, are other possible materials that you can use. Uh, using materials in your home like scarves or ribbons, crepe paper, batons to enhance those movement activities are great. You can have kids choreograph a show using props, see how creative they can be. My kids loved this when they were little and we used to have to introduce them and they do their, their show. You can get inexpensive, those microphones at the dollar store that uh, no wires, it just kind of amplifies their voice a little bit, which are fun. Also visit your local library, check out books on music. Sometimes they let you check out instruments as well. And you can also check out music videos. You can do some YouTube things together and look at some music there. And if your child does watch music videos, watch with them. Join in. Make it active. So if the video is demonstrating singing and dancing, see if you can follow along and sing and dance too. You can also use videos to help make transitions from one activity to another. For example, you know, we are going to leave for work when this particular song is over. Or if in you're in the car and listening to music, um, it can also help with that idea of time. Say, you know, we'll have a chance to listen to three songs before we get to our destination. Uh, so all of those are great ways and fun ways to incorporate music. So at MSEC, we always love to hear from children and their perspective. So we have a video that we want to share with you from a children's perspective about why music is important to them. Music is important to me because I'm eager to learn stuff and there's lots of instruments in the world. Music is important to me because my parents and sister keep saying that I should learn it and because I have an awesome singing voice. Music is important to me because 
I like to do the drums. Reading is important to me because you learn new instruments. And I think music is really important to me because it sounds really cool. Yeah. Music is important to me because I just like it. It's important to me because if when I'm a dog, if I need to play any music, I need to know the music. Uh, Music name. Music is important to me because it's just really calming me down when I'm nervous. I think that music is important because it brings us all together. And uh, music education is important to me because uh, I guess it's a, it's a fun thing to do. Like it's really something cool to learn. Music education is important because it helps with other parts of education and it's also a great way for young minds to express themselves. And the music education is important because to express myself and uh, uh, learn more about music theory. Uh, I like music education because it's very uh, intuitive to learn more about the instruments that I already know. And... Music education is important because it teaches kids skills about um, arithmetic and also history and just the fine arts in general. And music yeah. education is important because um, you know, learning different instruments, different styles is good to incorporate into what you play and what you write. Yeah. M music education is important because it can help you with many different jobs and situations in future life. I love that. So clearly we had all ages and stages of development and music was positive and impactful and wonderful in had a wonderful influence on in all of these children's lives and building their self-confidence and bringing them joy so we thought that well, that was a terrific video to share with you as we wrap up today so during this webinar we have shared research showing that music education can help develop brain areas increase spatial intelligence and may help to improve math skills among many other benefits we've also suggested easy ideas of how to incorporate music into daily routines and how to create simple crafts that allow you to make instruments out of common household items. But it will be music to our ears if you use the activities and information we've discussed to enjoy the experience of helping your child build a strong love of music that will last a lifetime. So we'd like to thank you all for joining us today for your participation in the chat box and for joining our webinar. So we would invite you to take our webinar survey. You can do that by clicking on the survey link in your chat box and or uh, scanning that QR code on the screen. And we really would appreciate the few minutes it'll take you to give us that feedback. Once in the survey, click on webinar survey and then type in that four digit webinar code, which is 4124. Be sure to hit submit at the end of the survey. If you don't fill out the survey now, following this webinar, you will also receive an email invitation to take the survey. We use this tool to make ongoing improvements to our webinar series, add new topics of interest, and provide feedback to our funders. So we really do appreciate the two to three minutes it'll take for you to complete the survey. If you missed one of our previous webinars, or if you would like to share this session, the recordings can be found on our website at www.militarychild.org. Um, backslash webinars or on our YouTube channel, which is at www.youtube.com backslash military child videos. And both of those links are also in the chat box. We would like to invite you to check out SchoolQuest. It's an online interactive tool specially designed to support our highly mobile military families and students. It has wonderful resources and tips to help students achieve academic success and well being. Sign up today. It is free. You can scan that QR code or use the link that is in your chat box. And again, these are all available in your resource as well. Michelle? Thank you. And School Quest is actually really, it's free for anyone. So professionals are welcome to check that out. It may help you with helping, you know, the children that you work with. So.
it, if you continue to have questions or concerns or educational related issues for your military connected children, whether you're a professional or a parent, our student, our military student consultants or MSCs are the premier source to help you with all of your questions. So in order to reach out to an MSC, there is a link in the chat box and there's some contact information on the screen as well. That is also a free resource. So the Military Child Wellbeing Toolkit was developed for parents, school professionals, behavioral mental health professionals, as well as community leaders. And this free tool uh, is full of resources for all aspects of military connected child wellbeing. And we would love for you to explore it on our website and again, share it with others. There we go. So our MSEC 360 summits provide opportunities for cross-sector collaboration, idea sharing, and programming support. For more information on them, use the QR code on the screen or the link in the chat box to see when the next 360 summit is coming to your area. So we want you to remember to save the date and mark your calendars for this coming Global Training Summit in DC. Our MSEC Global Training Summit will be July 19th through the 31st and registration is open. MSEC Call for the Arts program invites military connected children from all over the world, representing every branch of service to share their interpretation through art of what it means to be a military connected child. For more information on that, uh, please scan the QR code or click on the link in the chat box and notice that the submission deadline is April 30th on that. If you are interested in getting a certificate of completion, please do complete that online survey. And if you would like to receive a webinar survey for a recorded webinar that you may watch, we want you to please contact that link research at militarychild.org that is in the chat box. And we have some great webinars coming up. Next Tuesday the 19th, we have one encouraging your military child to lead a healthy lifestyle. And on Wednesday the 20th, that's self-advocacy for military connected students, which is really important with all of those moves that they have that ability to speak up for themselves. And we wanna give a special thanks to the Department of Air Force School Liaison Program for making today's webinar possible. And again, thank you for your interest and participation and we wish you all a great day.